This video is to demonstrate the relationships between current and voltage and resistance in parallel circuits. So if we have three resistors, say R1, R2 and R3, and we want to um, use those unknown resistance values to confirm our theories of relationships in a parallel circuit, I'll just take an ohm meter and measure the values of those resistances to see what we're working with. Just checking the ohm meter on the known value of 5.6 is 5.5. So R1 is measuring 15.5 ohms. R2 measuring 34.4 ohms. And R3 there's measuring 10 or 10.1 ohms resistance. So we can record those values um, and once we record them um, we can analyse a little bit of that already and see that um, 15, 34 and 10, if we had R1 and R2 in parallel applying the resistance equation for parallel circuits, the inverse formula, uh, we find that those two by calculation should be about 10.6 ohms. R1 and R2, 34 and 15 in parallel, gives an equivalent resistance of 10.6 ohms, noting that the 10 is less than the smallest value of resistance in the parallel arrangement. Uh, the same with R1 and R3 in parallel, applying the equation R1, 15 and 10 gives us 6 ohms, 6 less than the smallest value of resistance, R2 and R3 again 7.7 .7, less than the smallest value of 10 and if we put all three in parallel we should calculate about 5 ohms there which again is less than the smallest value of resistance in the parallel circuit. So if we connect those up and prove that then uh, parallel circuit we can uh, test our leads before we use them of course and we want R1 and R2 in parallel. So the two positive sides here is the inside of the two resistors where we come into the parallel circuit and the out would be the negative where we're coming out of our parallel network. So across these two points of R1 where we've got positive and negative we're measuring an equivalent resistance of 10 ohms with um, uh, R1 and R2 in parallel, so a 15 in parallel with a 34 gives us that 10 ohms, what we calculated. If we put R1 and R3 in parallel, so we just where we go into R3 and out of R3, just move those two conductors down there, we can see that circuit uh, resistance drops to 6.1 ohms on the ohm meter. R2 to R3, we can just come down again both in parallel and our calculated value of 7.8 ohms is found with R2 again smallest than the lowest value of R3 there that 10 ohm resistor with all three in parallel we join up R1 and R2 and also the negative side of those two resistors R1 and R2, so all three resistors are now connected in parallel. So the positive side, where I've used these yellow leads to represent a positive of the parallel network, and the overall equivalent resistance comes out about 5.3, which is what we uh, calculated. Um, do note at that point too, if we uh, did develop an open circuit in one of the resistors there, so there's our equivalent resistance of the parallel branch of 5.5. If one resistor becomes open circuit, say R2, notice how the overall resistance increases, or R1 increases to 7.7 .7 just with those two resistances. Uh, similarly, if we developed a short circuit, say across R2, notice the equivalent resistance drops down to zero. We've got a dead short circuit and very high currents can flow, so a dangerous situation with short circuits. Um, so 
But um, if we add resistances to the circuit, the total resistance decreases. If one resistor is open circuit, the total resistance increases. And if we get a short circuit, the, um, we end up with zero resistance and very high circulating currents can flow. So I've sort of just proven that with resistance measurement, but now we'll connect the circuit. Um, so we need a circuit diagram to plan off. We've got a uh, 10 volt DC power supply with a voltmeter connected in parallel through a fuse, a circuit protection device, through a control device, an on-off switch there, in series with an ammeter, so that's a series arrangement. But then our load splits up into a parallel network, the three separate paths of possible currents that can flow in the circuit. And that's what I've represented here with the yellow leads, is those positives in the circuit. So we want to measure the circuit parameters of uh, the voltages and the currents in the circuit. So we connect up the circuit again, test all your leads before you use them. Uh, down here on my voltmeter, down the bottom left here, I'll have a, a voltage supply. So I just um, check that. You can see when I connect those two leads in there, I've got 10 volts DC connected to the panel. Um, so from that DC supply, I can now come out of that positive in through a circuit protection device and I'll come out of the circuit protection device and into the control device. So a series arrangement there and to represent a switched positive I'm going to come out with a white wire into the circuit ammeter, into the positive terminal and then out of that positive terminal I'm going to come back to um, our load which is a parallel network over here of R1, R2 and R3 all connected in uh, parallel. Um, of course we need a return from our negative side of the parallel network so on all those uh, black coloured leads there for negative back over here to the supply. Um, so circuits all connected ready to go we know we're going to have 10 volts there when I turn the power supply on there it is down there and turn the circuit on, circuit protection and the ammeter there is just indicating about 1.9 amps down here on the ammeter you can see when I turn that on and off so we do have current flow. Uh, to look at the voltages across each of those resistors so I'm going to take a little DC voltmeter this time just to keep it simple Turn the circuit on and measure the voltage across each of those load resistors. So I've got 10 volts, 10 volts across R2 as well, 9.9, .9, and R3, 9.8 volts there. Okay, so roughly the same voltages across each of those resistors. So uh, I've proven there already that voltage is the same in all parts of the circuit. Um, to measure the circuit current, just to simplify things, I'll use a digital ammeter this time and I'll select the 10 amp scale up here on the, on the um, multimeter, 10 amp DC, the little straight line indicating uh, DC. We don't use the AC uh, line over here for volts AC, the little sine wave. We go to the DC because we're using direct current. So to measure the current, coming into R3, I have to um, physically break the circuit. So I pull that lead out of R1, put that in the ammeter, and where that came out of the circuit, I've got to complete the circuit into R1. So we've still got our parallel network occurring through the positive yellows, and when I turn the circuit on, you can see I've got 0.65 amps on the multimeter there indicating um, 650 milliamps through resistor 1 so I can record that. Turn the circuit off, take the ammeter out, so leave the common or the negative lead in the ammeter and replace that positive back in the circuit where you took it out so it keeps the circuit intact. The same thing with resistor 2 
I disconnect the positive going into resistor 2, put it into the ammeter, and then complete the circuit with the negative where I took that positive into resistor 2. Circuit on, and you can see I've got 0.29 amps or 290 milliamps throwing, uh, flowing through resistor 2. So record that value, remove the ammeter, take the negative out, put the positive back in where you broke the circuit and then again now we need to put the positive of resistor 3 into the ammeter and complete the circuit where we took that out of the circuit so we haven't changed the integrity of the circuit. Turning the circuit on we've got uh, up here one amp of current going through resistor 3 down here so we've got our three circuit currents so we record those and you'll notice when you add those three currents that we've measured they all add up to the total circuit current of um, 1.9 uh, nearly 2 amps so we can analyse that uh, mathematically which we'll do shortly